Hello, everybody. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for, gosh, what is it? April 29th of 2022. Oh, gosh. Let's see. And if we could just take a moment to step into the heart space. Resetting up here after. Okay. So if we could jump into the heart space this morning, closing your eyes, if you wish, putting your attention onto your physical heart and connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light of the earth into the heart, connecting heart to heart with creation, source, soul, creation, breathing in that light into the heart. In that third breath, you become grounded, connected in the heart space. And you're that calm of light that brings in that energy of creation, the energy of Gaia, and connects them through you. Well, good morning. Yeah, I still feel a little strange this morning. I think I had a heart transplant energetically here just a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, a lot of crazy stuff happening this morning. Um, well, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening everywhere right now, which is fantastic. I'm still just kind of integrating. So good to see all of you here this morning. Um, gosh, everybody's here from all over the world. A few from California, Miami, Atlanta, Ohio. Um, yeah, thank you all for joining us here. And um, we'll go ahead and start our 50 questions out here with questions from the internet. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, you're welcome to go to Twisted Sage and sign up for our, our free live, um, our live webinars, if you wish. Otherwise, I know a lot of you write uh, questions uh, email because you're not able to attend the live ones because of time. So thank you for still participating by sending in your questions. Um, and then those of you who are here live, again, if you could put your questions over on the questions tab and we will get those as soon as we get through the emails here. So let's see, we will begin with the oldest here, which let's see. So this question's from Pam. I have an Infinity Halo originally purchased before it was discontinued. Will the new Infinity, will the new energies, let's see, do the older Infinity Halos carry the new energies of the Wisdom Generator? So the, the old um, Infinity Halos that we carried were the Golden Fire. Uh, they were Golden Fire Band and the Golden Fire Infinity. And, you know, we, we did stop creating those because to me they were more just a novelty in that it would be the same wearing that halo on the head as it would carrying a ring in the pocket as a pendant um that is just something in your field that it didn't really do any extra um other than just being a ring which is still phenomenal but the new halos um i'm sorry i don't have a halo with me the new halos are uh, bringing through that energy, the, the new energy that we're working in, that, that energy of the earth and you as creation, um, that, that blue and that gold energy. But the energetics in the halos, whether it's the halo with the infinity on it or just the halo band, is brain balancing. Um, and we'll actually, that'll be one of the, the meditation that we'll do today is we will work on that whole concept of brain balancing because it's um it's just what's going on in the world right now you know we thought 2020 has started the, the world going crazy it's it's really pushing through as it is causing us to um shift through everything i mean we are totally having our brains rewired so with this halo what i'm seeing it is coming in is it is bringing more of your light and it's kind of like that light body that that electric that electric light that flows through over the brain so it's basically working with that rest of the light body um 
which is kind of where we're going on basically stepping out of the old nervous system and into the newer system that can work with all of the wisdom and the light that we are amassing right now um, in, in that whole new body system. But the, the brain balancing is such a huge part of that right now. Um, so let's go on to the next question here, and we will definitely do a meditation today on, on that the quantum mind. So let's see, uh, a question from Marin. Um, let's see. Where do I optimally place the Alchemist tab on a, on a MacBook laptop? So the Alchemist tab, which are the, the, the gateway pendant that we have, um, Re, we've reconnected that gateway tab and so now then it looks like the gateway tab but it is the alchemist pendant um, it's the three rings this is a prototype version but it's the three rings that you can stick on to your electronics now when you put the any of a tab um, whether it's the gateway tab or um, a cell tab or anything on any electronic you can place it anywhere on the device so the question was about placing that alchemist tab onto a, a a macbook a chromebook or a laptop basically the same with a phone or any electronic device as long as you place that ring anywhere within this electromagnetic field it's going to be working so with a laptop or a phone that that disc or tab doesn't have to actually fix and adhere to the physical form because we are basically bringing that ring into the energetic field and as soon as that ring comes into the energetic field of the phone or the laptop it's doing the work so when you're placing your your ring on your laptop or your phone place it wherever you find the most aesthetic um, value in it really because as long as it is anywhere in the field it is doing the work uh, let's see and um, all right there's a couple other questions that I can fine-tune personally uh, let's see the next question about the silver wisdom wand okay so i love the quantum healer and wisdom wand pendant never take them off a wonderful cocoon feel drawn to the silver wisdom wand what's the experience when you added it the silver wisdom wand to the other two and what's the difference okay so the the two that i have here are the silver wisdom wand and the wisdom wand pendant in silver they energetically um, and wearing them as a pendant to me, I feel are very comparable and basically the same. You know, they're, they're basically the same energetic. There's a slight subtlety difference between the two. What I like about the silver wand is to me, it's more, it's to me, you can use it more in the physical, like the, like the regular wisdom wand, like the full size wisdom wand. Um, to me, using the the silver wisdom wand, they're they're very comparable. Except for the silver, in comparison, is actually more of a crisper, cleaner, laser like focus. Um, is the way a lot a lot of people describe that in comparison. Now, when you step into the wisdom wand pendant, this little one, you can still use exactly the same with running energy. Um, it's going to all contain the same field because it is connected to the same energetic tool. So these are all going to be the same energetics they're carrying. But their physical form makes the energetics just a, a subtle difference in the energetics. So again, um, Wisdom Wand, fantastic. The Silver Wisdom Wand, just a little bit of a crisper, cleaner, mm, um, more, yeah, crisper, cleaner. I guess crisp is the word we're looking for. And then the pendant, 
dependent is one to me that it's like you more connect into it. Um, um, I don't feel it as much on the physical. So the pendant to me is more of a um, of a passive tool that you just wear in the field, but yet you can still use it and it pans to run energy. Um, so hopefully I answered the, the questions there. And again, I apologize for my um, kind of disconnectedness here still this morning as I am stepping more into myself. Uh, it's been a really transformative time. Actually, uh, when I was gone here last 50 Questions Friday, we were doing um, workshops out in Wisconsin. And on the way home, man, I had some of the hugest transformations I feel I've ever had. And still kind of integrating that. I couldn't even ride the motorcycle for a couple of days because it was integrating so much physical, physical. All right. So next question is about the infinity halo will you please go into detail about the energies and possibilities of the tool um and then there's another part of the question there so basically the again the the halo that we created just the halo itself um is carrying the same energetics as the infinity halo with the infinity sign on it so they're both going to be basically bringing in that that newer energy which is that really substantial connection to the heart of the earth and it is bringing more of you um your soul as that giant creator sun in a universe that is all you so it is more connecting you to that that you are as well as that grounding so when you're wearing that halo, um, it is bringing, it's helping to bring through that connection. But that halo has its own very unique energy in it that's only found in this halo and the and the um, and the infinity halo. So the halo and the infinity halo both contain that energetics of the brain balancing. Um, and so what that does, it opens up that right brain hemisphere more. It balances the brain and then it connects it upwards to the higher mind to the quantum mind which is it's beyond the human mind it is it is the soul um so that is where that halo is helping to connect you more mentally the mind to that of the soul to the higher mind um so yeah these are pretty pretty phenomenal tools the these halos are and um you know, 36 bucks for just the regular one. It's really is a, it's really is a great ring. Um, I can fit it under a hat, um, you put it over a hat. It's, it's a pretty amazing ring. So let's see the other part of the question on that halo is if you can use, if you can like put elementals onto it, which you most certainly can. So basically any tensor ring, if you take a tensor ring and you take the elementals and you put inside basically this tensor ring acts like a carrier wave because it produces that column of light whatever you put right inside of this ring it's going to be acting like a carrier wave for that so if i took this piece of wonderful beautiful rose quartz from our state of south dakota and i put it inside this ring this ring is now broadcasting that energy of the rose quartz So that would be the same as working with um, the halo and putting the an elemental or a crystal or anything within there is that it just amplifies it. It puts it into that, that field. Um, but that's, uh, but that's not something that we do like custom, custom elemental halos or anything like that. That's, um, we're actually really super busy in the studio right now, um, working on some huge new projects. And so we generally don't take on any custom orders anyway, but um, making an a elemental halo definitely is not in our, in our wheelhouse at the moment. Um, so let's see, keep moving on. I think we had another question. Um, all right so 
Here we go. We'll jump over to questions here. All right. Starting here. Hey, Ethan. Are the wisdom rings and the new wings atop going to be infused with the new energies? It is really hard to say where we're going with the new energy right now. Um, I do have, okay, so I do have a really cool announcement on these new energies and the new energy of Twisted Sage. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, let me take a step back where the tools are going we'll, of anything that has the new energies. Basically, anything new that we release as of April forward, any new tools that we release are going to totally be in that new energy. Um, we'll still keep making all of the tools that we currently have in the energies that are there um, for now. But anything new coming out of the studio as of the beginning of April, April 5th or, or, or that first week of April, is all going to be in the new energy. Um, so yeah, so as far as updating any of those. Now, um, gosh, oh yes, the, um, the announcement that I want to make about those new energies, and, and again, my apologies for being so unconnected here today. It's um, a lot going on. So the new energies, we saw something really super cool come through with Twisted Sage here this last week. Is that, or... Um, yeah, this week here, just a few days ago, we were doing some harmonizing work with the studio and and everybody within the studio. Um, when we were holding space, when Brendan and I were holding space, it was really interesting because I saw, well, Brenda pointed out that core essence of Twisted Sage. That light that is Twisted Sage, um, it was a beautiful star that came up out of the earth, birthed out of the earth, and it's this golden white star. And that is the core energetics of Twisted Sage. Um, what that means, I really don't know, but I know that it is that same connection to the whole concept that we've been working with, with that blue light energy of the earth and that golden sun of you as creator and how they come together and so um anyway very interesting so i'm, I'm sure that we're going to be shifting some tools here soon with this energy um because i feel that is that that new energy as well <clears throat> so as far as the updating of old tools we will gosh we're going to be kind of in the flow with that and and i know that we will soon have the ability to just update tools. So I, I kind of look forward to that whole process too. Um, Nika, I saw the Infinity Halos back. Do the older Halos have the same energetics? Oh, yep, and nope, and I wish they did. Um, but those, the older Halos are the Golden Fire, which really did not do a lot beyond um, just holding a field for you. Let's see, another question here. Oh shoot. My, uh, my computer's having a little bit of an issue here. All right. So this question is, I was wondering what the difference is between the Divine I Am Taurus and the new Alchemist Taurus. Um, and Fernando, I apologize. I am not able to read the rest of your question here beyond this for some reason. Um, so what is the difference between the divine I am Taurus and the new alchemist Taurus? So the alchemist Taurus was really the very first that we were able to anchor in this new energetic in. So the divine I am very much was the energy of the soul. And that was, um, you know, the, the closest we got to to having a field that was that energy of the soul. And it was, you know, it was a, a peaceful field. It was really a high connecting field. Um, but that divine I am 
was simply a stepping stone to get us to where we're at now with like the alchemist Taurus. So the alchemist Taurus is, it's bringing in so much more of the soul. It is, it is allowing you to connect to the soul in its entirety as a central sun of creation within creation. And that is, you know, and that is everything that the soul is. Um, and so the divine I am was a really a wonderful, um, it's like it could show us the space. It was kind of like a teaser for us in, into that space of stepping fully in. Now, you do not, it's not like you need these tools to step into that space. So the divine I am Taurus is still a phenomenal Taurus. And it is going to be holding wonderful space for you and, and, and great to work with. Um, because the stepping into this higher space of that divine you and that blue energy of the earth, it's a choice and intention. Um, you know, we've, we've done it in the past 250 Questions Fridays where we step into that space. And so you definitely don't need the Taurus to do that, that alchemist Taurus. Um, so that is kind of the difference in, in everything that we've created that has been released since that Alchemist Taurus. All of those tools are very much in this new energy. You know, I have a giant dumpster sitting outside of one of my spaces here, and we are getting ready. I'm getting ready to go through every single thing that I own. I'm going to pick it up, whether it's a book or whatever art stuff physical stuff i'm going to go through and i'm going to sit with it does this support me in this new energy is this aligned in this new energy if it is not it's going so yeah that's gosh, i'm not sure why i brought that up but yeah that is really huge um in this transition right now of finding what it is that truly resonates with us and if it doesn't letting it go um because we are really stepping into some pretty phenomenal new energies you guys um and let's see and then a the quick question with the difference between the halo and the infinity halo so and again they're both the same energetics what i noticed about the infinity halo is is that it, it looks it's great for aesthetics it looks nice but with your visualization it makes a great visual aid in that you can and energetically you can tangibly feel that infinity and when you feel that or imagine that see that you can use that as a visual aid of seeing that infinity going through the brain hemispheres balancing the brain connecting the left and right and then that infinity turns so that it stands up and then it is connecting the pineal to the higher mind. It, that's how it connects through to the higher mind. So it works as a great visual aid, but energetically, the halo is just as powerful as the infinity halo is. All right, and Thomas, what's the best tool for use in my frequency healing chamber? To mitigate the effects of EMF, the chamber runs off a Tesla coil. So harmonizing the electromagnetics. So basically you need something in there that is a strong enough tool to harmonize all of that field. Um, so... I guess I was looking at seeing if maybe putting a ring around the base of the, the Tesla coil, that's a thought. Um, I'm almost thinking that having a, a, like a tensor field generator or a Gaia sphere within that space is going to be the best for harmonizing all electromagnetics. Because again, where electromagnetics are a part of all physical reality and we, we we harmonize them so that we, so that they are harmonic field. So I mean, so that they are harmonious field. Um, that's the only reason that electromagnetics can be 
harmful to us is that they create a disharmonious field and if we're not standing you know strong in ourselves then that disharmonious field just totally scatters ours and throws us off so um the tensor fields are harmonizing that electromagnetic field and then um and then it's a beneficial field because it's harmonized it's not a discordant field so i'm gonna guess um you know actually tom i would wait on that one for just a little bit because i have a feeling that we will have a gaia sphere out in that new energy um, right now you could use one of the tensor field generators in that new energy which is the wisdom generator the wisdom uh, the wisdom generator bracelet is one that is in that new energy um, because the new energy tools basically carry everything before it that's all available there but these are the most powerful tools um, I feel that we create because they are working with the most powerful thing in creation and that is you and the earth your consciousness your light and the human with its intentions um, so I would suggest Tom to you, Thomas, to either try out one of the wisdom generator bracelets, or if you want to wait a few weeks, it could be it could be three to four weeks yet that we have a a wisdom uh, Gaia sphere in that new energy. But but yeah, that's that's what I would suggest for the space. Uh, Victoria. My husband and I seem to be experiencing entities come up almost spontaneously recently. This appears to be a to, to be from events stored in our energy fields. What do you recommend to quickly clear this? All right, so there's been a lot of entities and implants. Geez, I had an implant in my brain at the base of my skull this morning. Man, I was in rough, rough shape. Um, this one actually had to do with a soul aspect. So there was an aspect that came in and brought that stuff in and affected. Um, so as far as working with entities, that's, you know, and you mentioned that um, this appears to be from events stored in our energy fields. That's what that feels like to me is, is that you have, um, you know, aspects of you or an experience like let's say you have this lifetime and within that lifetime you had an entity attachment well as we begin to integrate these lifetimes which we're doing automatically as we begin to integrate these lifetimes we're bringing in the good the bad the ugly the beautiful the entity attachments from that lifetime well for me i brought in that implant um, from that soul aspect an aspect is a lifetime so anyway, as you are bringing that in, um, what I would suggest to do is to do the zero point meditation that we did on 50 questions Friday, which I believe was on December 3rd or December 5th, that first week in December, because we went into that zero point space where we brought in, where we created that cocoon of light, untainted, untaintable, and you start to invite in your aspects and as that aspect comes in it integrates it and you don't have and you don't have to worry about it. it's untainted light untaintable light so as you bring that in and if there is that entity attachment you simply just send it light because what happens is as that aspect integrates that contract that soul contract is released and then if you still see that entity send it love to its heart it will simply any entity any being that is connected to us that is not in this physical realm that appears to be malicious go to its heart send it love what you're doing is you are connecting its heart to itself so imagine doing the trinity breath for it for that being what happens is when it connects to its soul it has remembrances it drops its agenda and walks away 
that's how we work with entities or any of these big bad beings is we go to their heart and we imagine doing the trinity breath for them so that they connect to their soul and when they do everything shifts simple and amazing so yeah i would certainly say to try out that meditation um from december december 3rd or 5th uh <laughs> question how's the energy spa coming along oh man so it's still sitting right where it is um i feel like i'm finally getting through some transformations here to where i can start taking bites of of everything and start in in a direction here of getting the spa open the first thing we're going to do is i'm starting with my home space our 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 space that has the electroplating and t-shirts and storage and then we're coming here to this studio and to that studio and we are going to just be going through and finding the things that are no longer in service uh, that do not align with that beautiful star energy of the studio or of ourselves and it's going to go so once we do all of our huge clearing physically energetically here then we will be in a space to be able to start working on that energy spa um, because I would love to get this place opened up. Uh, Renard, I've noticed whenever I'm doing deep journey work, I feel a heaviness of my higher self. Have you experienced that? And what is a good tool to mitigate that? So any of the heaviness, do that meditation, do that zero point of the soul meditation and become that light untainted, untaintable as a magnet for all of your light and consciousness. And then invite in all heaviness to transform and integrate. Again, when you're working in this space untainted and untaintable, then you can start its divine awareness. And with that divine awareness, you put your divine awareness onto whatever that is and your soul does the work. Um, so the things that you feel that are heavy are simply experiences. They're simply things that we need to bring in to um, alchemize. We need to alchemize it all. And we do that with our light untainted and untaintable as we alchemize so uh, that's really the answer to everything 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 right now is to alchemize it harmonize it um, no we have not named this new energy yet um, uh, this new energy that's coming into the tools um, what's the newest tool with the new energy let's see the, the newest tool that we released, I think, with the new energy would be that Alchemist tab. And that Alchemist tab is one that you can put onto electronic devices for when you are either simply writing a text, a phone call, or you're composing a, um, you're composing music, or you're composing a, a writing or digital art. Whatever it is that you are creating, basically that energy comes through your creation um, it's just like the gateway tab did but this is more powerful more transformative um, th this energy is so uh, that is the the newest tool that we have we will have let's see basically next um, I believe next Friday we will have a new class which will be the wisdom clasp and it's in copper. It's a little bit heavier gauge, like the Heka clasp is heavier than the Hekas. Um, and that one will be coming out here next Friday. But otherwise, um, we're still slowly getting new tools out in this new energy. So um, let's see. Christine, I sleep with the column of both sets of practitioner rings. Is wondering if I place the new halo in them would that make the whole column the new energy as well? So yes, basically, if you have a practitioner ring 
and you bring in even the smallest ring in that new energy, basically that new energy then is within that entire field. So when you have a container, you're just adding more stuff into the container. Um, so with that, it may, it may not feel exactly like the new energy. Um, it's like you have to kind of pull it out of there because you're going to have a really full box. You're going to have your box of all the different energies there together, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, they all harmonize together. And then when you add the halo in there, um, basically it's not like that field is just going to be the energy of that, that halo and that new energy is going to be multi-layered. But if you sit with it, um, you know, just, just sit with it and you can pull out that specific energy um, out of that space. So basically if you're sitting with the halo inside of all your rings or you're sleeping in it, um, you just have the intention that you're going to connect into that energy that you're going to bring all, all the potentials and possibilities of that energy through for you. Let's see. Um, Alan, with this new energy, do you think that we can make, appear physically bread and water i yes i well yeah I, I totally believe that's where we're going and you know that we are going to step into being creators you know bread and water manifest instantly um i still feel like we have some other work to do first uh, we have some transformations to make we have to still uncreate a lot of our creation because even though we're, we've been cleaning our palette really well, our little palette of creation, there's still some soul aspects, some traumas, some other things that are still in our palette. This palette of our creation is not quite clean yet. You know, we've been doing a lot of work because this palette of creation is all of your experiences, your your everything. So, so far, we are turning this palette and we are turning it into all new colors. We're turning it into wisdom. We're turning it into light. Um, all these experiences of creation, our old programs, our beliefs, our traumas that we would create with. That's what I mean. This palette that we use to step forward into creation to create onto this beautiful blank canvas. So I think that we still need to clear some of our palette. And then once we do, then we will be able to come in with these energies. And as we are painting onto this new beautiful canvas of creation, I think that is total. Well, I know that's one of the possibilities is instant creation. Um, you know, that's just one of the things, but yep. Uh, we're, we're getting there, but yet we still have to keep clearing our old palette. And so, yes, this new energy is very much helping in that releasing, that clearing work, um, and that connecting and us stepping more into creation and us becoming more grounded as creation here and now. So, you know, I don't think there's any way that we cannot step into that instant physical manifestation um, and I have a Hedica elemental which is inside of a golden fire generator would it be more advantageous to put it inside of my harmony ring the harmony hang ring hangs within a tree in our yard to hopefully help with our garden so um, again the harmony ring a ring is only going to create that column of light so if you have that ring hanging to where it can spin, fantastic, because then it is shining that column of light everywhere. Now, too, with a ring, if you place like a crystal inside of here, any quartz crystal, it will help to basically refract that energy. So instead of just this column, you are creating all of these you know, it's kind of like taking um, a prism or, you know, one of those disco ball looking prisms that shoots rainbows all over. It's like if you put one of those or a crystal inside of here, well, if you put a crystal inside of here, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to be refract, refracting that light out everywhere. So um, 
to answer the question about whether the harmony or the golden fire would be better for for the environment for the nature you know the golden fire is going to still be absolutely perfect um you know the the harmony i do still like how the harmony interacts with the elementals and the plants and the trees and in in all the nature divas so maybe you do want to take your harmony ring and put your Hedica in there as well as some crystals and let that hang and spin um, in the environment but you know I, I really feel that whatever one you are going to enjoy the most and that you are going to have your attention with the most because as we put our attention there we really amplify everything that comes through the tools so you know that's kind of where i'm saying having the one that hangs and spins and is flashy and everything else might really be the one because that's the one that and you don't have to have intentions or or i'm going to run energy or anything all it takes is your awareness onto this and it amplifies everything um, because that's because we are truly stepping into our creatorship right now with our divine awareness um, Nika, a friend of mine ended up in the hospital yesterday thinking she was having a heart attack and I thought I might be having a stroke. All tests run came back on us absolutely normal, nothing going on. Can you talk a little bit more about the rewiring of our bodies going on right now? Holy smokes, you know, and I don't know, Nika, I know I, I was having a rough time this morning. Um, my heart hurt, it was all heavy, um, stuff going on, just you know there is a lot of stuff going on and for me there's something energetically that happened with the heart and it's interesting because a friend of mine here this last weekend had something energetically happen with her heart too it's like it's like we both got these heart transplants it's like um it's like that energetics was just um released in a new they came in and put in a new energetic heart um and so, but this is all so individual that is happening to each and every one of us. It's not like any one of us are going through the exact same thing, but we're all going through these transformations. Now, the thing with the heart is um, harmonize. That's, that's where I would go with it, is I would bring yourself into that heart space and bring that beautiful light that blue light of the earth wrap everything up your heart your body everything physical bring in that big creator sun and again when we bring those energies in that energy of earth and sky in this way that we did on our past 250 questions fridays we don't have to have the hard intention that okay i want to work on my heart your soul already knows that that's the intention that is the reason that you are going to do this this meditation of bringing those energies in is to work on your heart so you don't have to put your actual attention there your intentions and, and everything else because it is actually better when you were working with this energy if you just step aside if you just step aside and allow your soul to do that work with the heart but your intention when you're going in there is harmonizing so when you step into it you have the intention already but then you just let it go and allow um, so really that's that's the best advice I can give to you on that heart and feeling into that um, is because because our bodies do start to freak out as we go through these transformations and again doing that meditation exercise of bringing in that energy of the earth the energy of creation is going to help the body step out of the anxiety because a lot of times too our bodies are getting such anxiety um, because of those transformations so the more we just hold our body in peace which is our light and grounded in, in that peace of the earth the easier those transformations take place so that's that's what I would suggest is to sit in that energy in that energy of you um, 
and then to you know you can always reach out to do a session with Brenda if you ever feel but I feel like um, I feel like it's all good you know and that's something that you know Brenda said to me the other day and I was like well yeah totally is that right now everything cannot help but to be good even if we're seeing the chaos and, and we're experiencing the, the stuff we cannot help but for everything right now to always be all good and if we can surrender into that into the soul into the knowing that everything that is happening in our world is happening for us in the highest and best right now everything is our energy and is here to serve us and it is serving us in new and phenomenal ways so step out of your untrusting of the flow of the universe and of you and your soul um, and just know that everything is good everything is good um, and I yeah I yeah Brendan I totally believe and feel that we really truly do um, so let's see Ethan have you experimented with the wisdom generator in the collapse form as a pendant um, so Ethan got a hold of me the other day and he took the um, the wisdom generator oh I like making a make a basket um, takes the wisdom generator this is the form you can put any tensor field generator that collapses into and so Ethan was wearing the wisdom generator as a pendant on the heart and basically when you collapse a generator it's creating that that calm of light but it's it's a little bit it's more potent because you have four rings together instead of a single ring that's creating that calm of light um and Ethan asked if i was could do some experimenting too which i have not i apologize it's been it's, it's been an interesting moment um so that's something to to play with is is working with those generators um <clears throat> as more of an intense column of light so yeah i cannot say anything on this today Ethan. Um, nika do the three templates of each tool look like the physical tools if not can you describe one or two so no the etheric templates are basically they're just a um a field of energy and that field of energy so the etheric template of the golden fire and light wand because it is actually an ancient etheric tool that's actually in a higher dimensional physical form um that particular one is you know and that's a golden fuzzy rod of light that's the only real etheric tool that we have that has a form the rest of it is just energy energy and patterns of energy that is really an, an intent i mean that's really all the authority templates um, are are more just an energy um versus the actual physical tool uh linda my eight-year-old grandson had a virus that affected his heart and caused two strokes would the halo be beneficial for him <sighs> um the halo will be beneficial for anybody who wears it um i don't know what it will do to assist any of the things that he has going on but the halo will be beneficial for anybody um it it's um because it is working more so with your soul's light so it's not going to it, it's it's going to be beneficial for whoever wears it now will it um assist with what he has going on it very well could it very well could just because it is bringing in his light more and grounding him more um that it could have that effect for him and again basically it's yeah it's between him and his soul but i i feel that field can be very beneficial uh can these tools help with prosperity my goodness yes we are all infinitely abundant we are infinitely we're healthy abundant but we create blockages um either we create blockages through lifetime or their programs belief structures all kinds of things can be a blockage 
to you being open to receiving your abundance. I mean, this world is infinitely abundant if you look at it in a physical three, three, third density form. But energetically, each of us are so abundant because we're powerful creators. I mean, we're, we're giant sons in creation. So we are infinitely abundant because we are creators, but it's the blockages. So do the tools help with abundance? Yes, because they help to release stuff. They help to release those things that can be that blockage and that hindrance to us receiving that abundance and that health and the healing, all of that. So when we are doing healing work, it's not, you know, we are simply clearing up what the energetic issue is. And it is your body, your phenomenal being that comes in and, 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 and makes itself whole again. It heals itself, basically. It heals itself from whatever that energetic was that was causing the dis-ease, the disharmony. So that dis-ease, that disharmony in your abundance is simply those blocks. Um, those blocks can be everything from programs of, of being not worthy. Um, I mean, that's that's been a big one. I mean, for humanity uh, it is those those programs of, of not being worthy of and then there's programs of lack. Um, you know, there there's a lot of things that cause us to not be in our flow. So the tools definitely can help, but it's the meditations, it's the consciousness work. The tools hold the space for us to do the consciousness work. The, the work can happen with just wearing the tools and not ever doing the work and just being and just allowing it to passively happen. It, you can totally use the tools in that way of just allowing them to passively hold fields and for the things to just happen on their own, which they do. Um, but if you know what that block is, you can get in there with the tools that, that they're holding the space. You can use a wand or you can just be in a giant ring or... Um, you know, just imagining that field and using that field as an extra space holder for you. But truly, it comes down to you choosing to release those blockages. Because um, everything is truly a choice here. And we can choose to release, to allow all of that to just start to go. And as soon as we make that conscious true choice, hey, I want to be an abundant. I allow the release of all blockages in my abundance. <sighs> Do you feel that? I have goosebumps on top of goosebumps. Make that statement and then that starts everything rolling. We have to make the choice. And if we even just make that conscious choice that, hey, I allow the release of all blockages to my abundance. I allow the release of all blockages to my health, um, whatever it is, then you are making that statement that you are ready. And then things are just going to start shifting. Um, so we got to make the choice. Uh, Mika. The white star and golden sun and the blue energy you talked about sounds like yoga light of spirit or katasha, which is the white star, pure spirit within a blue disc, consciousness within creation, within a golden halo, creation itself, a doorway to higher self. You are looking back at yourself. That's beautiful. That really is beautiful. I'm going to have to sit with that one too, Micah. I really like that description. The white star and golden sun and blue energy are the yoga light of spirit, which is the white star, pure spirit, within a blue consciousness disc and a golden halo. Huh. Yeah, I totally got to look into that more. Uh, because that's, it's a beautiful description. Thank you very much. Um, Christine. We have just had a Tesla battery to store our solar power installed, and it had to be in the back of my son's of my son's bedhead. What tool would be the best for this? Um, 
so any of the any of the rings um, any of the rings golden fire and beyond anything made in the golden fire or after the golden fire um, any ring or tool that you place there on that headboard or on the battery will take care of that will, will harmonize that field that comes out of that space so um, if you have any ring right now like a Wi-Fi ring or the, the the disc for the electrical panel or even any of the water rings any of the newer water rings especially in the alchemist um, but if you need a specific ring for that I would suggest the nine inch harmonizer ring the nine inch harmonizer ring is one that is not really um, we don't <sighs> I'm not sure. I need to redo the website for the nine inch harmonizer ring. And, and I apologize for still having issues speaking here today um, because that nine inch harmonizer ring is such a phenomenal ring for EMF. Um, I use it with the laptop. So the nine inch harmonizer ring is a, would be a perfect one to place there on the headboard or on that battery between or on the wall between the battery and the headboard. So, Yep, that nine inch harmonizer ring is actually the one that I would suggest if you need to get a new ring to put on. Otherwise, again, um, you can go with the other suggestions there too. It'll be just perfect. Uh, Nika, what tool would be the closest thing to a transmutation vortex? That would be the, um, the toruses. The toruses are very much a true tube torus, a toroidal field. The most transformational, holy camoly, is, is the Alchemist Taurus. Now, I'm using the Alchemist Taurus, and I'm still working with that one, but I see that toroidal field, that Taurus in the center. And it's like what you put into that field, whether it's an entity or whether it's a situation or, or a pain or whatever it is, pretty amazing what happens in that, that little zero-point field of the Taurus. So the, the tool that is the closest thing to a transmutational vortex would be the Alchemist Taurus. And that one is the most powerful energy in creation, which is you as creator. I mean, it truly is the most powerful energy in creation. Um, so yeah, Alchemist Taurus is pretty amazing. Um, let's see. I received two of the new energy rings and held one in each hand. I'm not sure exactly what they did, but they knocked me out for a couple hours and I woke up so groggy, I wasn't sure where I was at. Was that rewiring? So, um, so it was, yeah, it, both, you know, I wouldn't really say it's rewiring more than, um, I guess I would describe more as repatterning. So to me, it's almost like whatever it cleared a bunch of stuff out. It, it because as as more of you came in and that energy of the earth came in, what it does is it comes in and it releases stuff. It just releases and alchemizes things, harmonizes, transmutes. It doesn't even really harmonize. It alchemizes. It transforms energies. Um, so basically, with um, with working with that new energy yeah is that it can come in and totally knock you out um i have actually heard this from a few people who sit with it it's not going to do it when you know you know it's not going to do it inappropriately well inappropriate from the perspective of the soul that is but it's it's um it's always going to be working in obviously in your highest and best from that higher perspective but um so I, I think it's fantastic that it that it knocked you out for a while to allow that repatterning of the energies because basically it took away so much of that and brought in more of you in its place. Because as we release energy, the stuff that no longer serves us, we're spring cleaning, we're throwing that stuff out, we can then have space for your light to fill in. Um, which is another reason for doing the release work is so that we can allow more of us within. Um, 
You were mentioning Wisdom Gaia Sphere. Do you know which approximately size? No, no, I do not. Actually, my uh, Lucas, our shop forum, is working on a Gaia Sphere today. Uh, well, he worked on one yesterday, and it's 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 kind of a new creation. The way that he created it with um, a double ring or a double wire. Um, I guess I can't even describe it, but we're we're definitely working on some new Gaia spheres and we don't know what those are going to look like yet so again we're still in a, kind of in the prototype and visioning phase of, of what that'll be um but you know that's something too that would love to get some feedback from some of you too on the size of gaia sphere you know the the five and a half inch golden fire Gaia is one of my favorites just because of that size is such a perfect size. So the other one that we were making was just a little bit bigger. And then we're making one that's a little bit smaller just as our prototypes um, to start working with. But um, yeah, so we're just kind of, kind of prototyping and, and we'll eventually, I think maybe next week we'll start, we'll start doing some polls on here again and just kind of asking for some input from people so um but yeah please wait on sending emails yet because we won't be able to really organize them to keep track of that but we might do an inquiry or a poll here in the future um on working on what sizes of gaia spheres things like that that you know most people would like to see um let's see is the new energy contained in the quantum heart pendant it is not. Um, that new energy is only in the Alchemist Taurus, the Wisdom Generator bracelets. Um, there's some prototype rings on the prototype page that have them, um, a couple of smaller rings. Um, there is the Alchemy Water Ring that has the new energy. Um, that's on the Water Rings page, that Alchemy Ring. Um, then there will be Gosh, then the next one will be that Hecka clasp, the wisdom, will be the next one that comes out Friday. So I believe those are the only tools that we currently have the new energies in. Um, let's see. Another question. Can we make a transfer of this new energy as with the wisdom ring and the slim spurling ring? Um, so basically um we had it we had people doing experiments with that where we took the wisdom ring and we took uh another ring doesn't matter it was a slim spurling ring but it can be even one of our older rings like a, a sacred like a sacred cubit and basically you take one of those older rings in the wisdom ring and you sit there with it and in the heart space and intend and ask that this that this ring carries the energy of that wisdom ring have not tried that with this new energy and i feel that we will totally be able to do that to be able to totally shift any of the old tools into that new energy um and again we haven't had too much time to really play with this yet but um yes i totally believe that we are going to be able to do that that we'll be able to teach you how to do that um can we sleep with the halo on? Oh, most certainly. Most certainly. And, and having the, the tools with you when you sleep is really a great way to be within those fields because it's when we're not in such conscious resistance, um, when we're, we're in more allowing when we're sleeping. So, um, yeah, totally sleep with the t within the field of the tools as much as you can. And it's a great way to utilize them. Uh, JR, what would happen if I stacked multiple rings inside one another? Would this be a beneficial amplification or it would be counterproductive? Harmonizers, water alchemy, silver water ring, Wi-Fi, etc. Um, you know, that really is a good question. So we've actually, over the years when we've played with all the different tools and all the different energies, sometimes you, you'll find a combination that is just, wow, it just feels so good. And sometimes you find a combination that's like, you know, I really don't like the feel of that combination. It's been still beneficial, but, you know, I just don't like the feel of it. So, you know, it's going to be very individual to the tools that you have. And basically, um, 
totally start stacking and intertwining and playing with the tools, but just feeling, feeling it and just being open to, um, you know, receiving whatever guidance you get along the way that you added those three together and, okay, does that feel good or should I take that one out and add this one and then, whew, then that feels fantastic. So it's really a matter of experimentation. <clears throat> um, and so you, you'll notice that it becomes, you know, you'll just kind of feel that, hey, that's that's the combination that I want to work with. Um, so totally just go by feel with that. Um, I tried to put a quantum pyramid inside of a water alchemy, but it didn't seem to feel good. So the... Um, yeah, and, and that's it. It's just, it's just totally experimenting and playing. And it, it is going to be an individual thing, too, because for some people, it might be that combination or, or directional flow or whatever it is that, that they may need. Um, but again, you won't do anything. You won't do any harm, but totally feel into it when you're playing with those combinations. Uh, does Twisted Sage have any plans to make any of the tools in the form of earrings. <clears throat> yeah, you know, over the years, that's always been a thing is that we've always wanted to make earrings and we've tried everything from French hoops to soldering posts on. And so we've never really found anything that was so phenomenal that we wanted to release it as a tool. We've had a lot of prototypes of earrings, um, but it is definitely something that is still in our awareness of, of something that we want to create sometime is earrings. And so, again, when that happens, we'll probably take a poll because before, you know, when I used to wear an earring, I never really liked French hoops, but I know a lot of people do. So we were kind of going back and forth on what the best style of earring is and the best metal and all that stuff. So, when we get back into um, prototyping the earrings, I, I think it would be a wonderful thing that we start to ask everybody to give the, that input. And so I think, um, and so I appreciate the inspiration here, everybody, because today, because that's that's what I would love to do is, is either send out an email or find a group of people who are, you know, who would like to put their input onto some of these new things. So thank you for that inspiration. Um, we'd be making a smaller pendant sized alchemist Taurus. Yes, we will. Oh my goodness. We've been working on this silver Taurus with a bale that spends for over a year. And we, 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 we've been working out the bugs on the physical creation of this thing. Um, Lucas is now very much, Lucas is working at him really hard right now because this new energy is going to go into that Taurus pendant. So we will have an alchemist Taurus pendant at some point in time, silver with a bale that spins with our logo on it. Phenomenal, but it's still going to be probably another month. Um, this has been a really a long time coming physical project, but now that the energetics are here, that's the energy that's going to be going into that. But yeah, another month, um, and we will work on that, Taurus. Um, nope, no name for the new energy. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of people trying to help us name it, and they keep getting the messages. No, <laughs> you just got to work with it. And so we're just going to continue to work with it for a little while, and um, because we're ever evolving, and then when we get a better handle on on this energetic. Um, I, I think we'll know. I think we'll know. And it may just go remain unnamed. And we may just switch all the tools to Twisted Sage Tensor tools. You never know. And leave out the golden fire. And the core energetics of it is simply the new energy. Um, and that's kind of like what I was seeing with that, that beautiful light that is Twisted Sage that came up. Is I'm almost feeling that that is going to be the, the base new energy for, for all the tools. Um, have you ever made an onk in the sacred measurements in one with any of the, and are with any of the energies? 
or an ankh on top of a rod. No, you know, I have never made an actual physical ankh. Um, always been fascinated with them and drawn to create it energetically, but never been really drawn to make one, you know, a physical representation of how the ankh looks. Um, but we do have Untak the key, which is the ankh of the now time. So Untak does carry, it is the ankh energetically. Untak is the key, the key pendant. Um, and as far as that key pendant goes, who knows if that one is going to move into the new energies or not either. So that's, that's it is, um, really don't know where we're going with the new energies and and what we're going to do on keeping the old energies but all i can say i guess is if they don't align to where we're going and what we're doing right now then they won't be here for sure um okay it looks like that was all of our questions here this morning which i think we will stop there and um just jumping over checking chat um Oh, somebody asking about the energies. You know, uh, so I guess, gosh, what was it? It was earlier this week. Um, yeah, I think it was earlier this week. It was last weekend that that the energies were really shifting for a lot of us. Um, you know, like Brenda, she would get dizzy and just not grounded for me um, after I went through my huge transformational shift. Um you know, it took about three days for me to, to be grounded more. And then whatever I cleared out and whatever I went through today, it feels like it just totally ungrounded me again. But I just did this work with just like right before 50 questions here. So I'm still not grounded in. Um, so, yeah, I really don't know what to say about what we're experiencing with the energies in the, in the shifts because, and again, everybody that I know is going through something a little bit different. Um, so anyway, um, somebody mentioned their parents are calm and quiet listening to 50 questions, not their norm. <laughs> That's funny. Um, all right. So, yeah. And again, thank all of you here who are on, who can, um, who all chat here on the chat side because, because there's a lot of great support um, here on the chat side from those who are here. So thank you all for being here and for, for sharing. Um, and yeah, I guess we will see you next week then. So, all right. Thanks again. Take care.